So I've got all these rock molds that I made for a different project. These are actually just tests. All right, I made molds of rocks myself and tried to see, uh, let's see, I think I poured resin in part of them and some other material, whatever. But I think these will work pretty well for the for the base um, border, whatever that's going to be. I might just kind of cut a strip out of each of them and just kind of press them in there. Their uh, base color is already pretty close to what I need, so that should work out fine.
have made two decisions. One kind of medium size scariness and the other very large. And uh, let's start with the less scary. I am really impressed at how clever I was with coming up with this black um, resin coating that, that I sand down and I get that perfect gray and it's got all this great little texture built in and it's got the, the same kind of patterning that you see on the Colossus. I mean, it's just so awesome. Um, and, you know, if it gets scratched, you'll never tell because it's the material is on the surface. That's awesome. Um, however, there are two disadvantages to this. The first is the uh, fidelity of the piece to the actual game asset. If you look at the patterns on the skin there, you'll see that they're much bigger blotches. There's small blotches and I experimented with sanding down to different depths to try to see like how how much I could proportion the black spots and the lighter spots and all that kind of stuff and I really could not get this size of, um, of splotches whatever so um, you know I was kind of thinking is, is it worth it I mean it's, it gets the general idea across fine um, but then I sat back and I looked at the my, my timer here and it was like I've spent almost 600 hours on this thing so far uh, why would I not you know at the end of however many hours this is why would I not say this is perfect I did it exactly the way I wanted it. I spent the right amount of time to get it done right it's a personal project I have that latitude there's no client that's waiting on this for a certain time therefore I'm I'm going to do it right. So, I'm going to do a I'm going to completely reskin this. I don't have to take off what's here. I'm just going to put over it a very thin layer. I'll probably use the epoxy sculpt. I've got black and I've got gray and I've got white. So, I'll still have the advantage of it being uh, the the skin not having to paint the skin, which is super exciting to me. Um, not because painting's hard, but it, I just have so much experience with painting stuff and then the paint doesn't work out or bubbles weird or, or flakes, whatever. I like not painting stuff. Okay, and number two, the big scary thing is, and I, I mentioned this in passing, uh, the, the length of the legs, it's just different how or why. I'm sure if you go back and look at the footage and, and you see us putting the scaffolding together, you'll see exactly why. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just pushing forward too much to be able to stop and look back. doesn't matter at this point. For future projects, it'll matter. Okay, anyway, you know, I took a measurement of where this, the thigh bone would attach to the hip bone, and the hip bone connects to the knee bone. So it's basically 10 inches on this leg. When I bring it over here, it's 12 inches from from hip bone to knee bone. <sighs> so, shortening this leg, obviously you saw it's like almost solid steel <laughs> skeleton in there. And my angle grinder busted, so I'm having to think, do I, do I, if, if I shorten it, obviously what I'm going to have to do is cut the leg and then, you know, take off a couple inches and then paste it back on and that's going to lose some of the structural integrity. However, I think I definitely overshot how, how stable this thing needs to be. Like, this thing, I think you could probably park a truck on top of it and it would be fine. So, I'm not super worried about losing the structural integrity. If I, if I cut through it, you know, I'll re-bolt it and all that kind of stuff. Um, and this is definitely the point to do it because I have the basic flow of the piece figured out, but I haven't tacked on the armor, I haven't custom fit all the armor pieces that are going to have to go on there. And moving the knee and the bottom of the leg forward is going to 
we move this around here. It's going to absolutely right. If I cut it, move this stuff forward, it's going to change the angle that the femur is at. Like right now it's this angle. Uh, once it's moved forward, the knee is going to be, let's see, this much closer. I think it's going to end up angling down a little bit, either up or down. One of those two, that is my prediction. Um, my super mathematical, can you tell I never took geometry? Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a slightly different angle, which means I'm going to have to shave, I'm going to have to redo the thigh, which is fine. Uh, the thigh is, I mean, at this point, it's basically a subtly tapered cone or subtly tapered cylinder. So won't be a problem. It's cutting through all this material that's in there that's going to be the challenge. So um, I pretty much made up my mind I'm going to do it, so I'm going to start hacking away at this and see where that takes me. Maybe I can do it with the uh, hand saws that I have. You know, I have a hacksaw, whatever. I'll see. <laughs> I'll start on it and see where it goes, and then I'll have to, you know, if it doesn't work, I'm going to have to decide, do I use a, a, what was the last, I think it was 30 or 40 bucks for that cheapo angle grinder, that's terrible, or I could go to Home Depot and get a real one that's like 100 bucks, and it's like, I, I hardly ever work with metal, will I ever use it again? I don't know. Anyway, neither here nor there, let's get to hacking. I'm trying to guess where the least amount of, um, remember I put those big iron plates uh, on all the bendy parts? So I think somewhere in here it's probably the least reinforced, so that's where I want to try to cut. And I'm also trying to decide do I want to cut it like straight down according to gravity or follow the angle of the leg, you know, 90 degrees to the leg. Hmm. I don't know what the advantages and disadvantages are to either of those. We'll go with the angle of the leg, that just looks prettier. It'll probably come back to bite me on the butt. We'll see. So frankly, I'm a little shocked that I may not have to cut out this whole section of wood and move the peg back. It totally depends on how um, how much of an angle I can get the back foot slid on there, since since obviously it's going to be tilted a couple degrees more to match up with this. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, anyway, so I drilled these peg holes here that I hope to put some rods through yeah into the other leg and I just thought of this what might be a cool trick we'll see um, for making sure that these peg holes line up I think if I put these little guys in here put a drop of paint on the tip of each one then when I lean the uh, the other side towards it, the uh, the little painted tips should leave a little splotch paint. We'll see how brilliant I am. All right, let the brilliance commence. 